Cecilia, um, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and explain how long you've been in the image industry, how long your business has been operating for, and then we're going to share your insights on TikTok. Okay. So my name is Cecilia Stokisht, and I am based in Wilmington, Delaware, in the U.S. I have been an image consultant for more than 20 years. Um, but as a middle age, living my last decade, I am learning to embrace all this new technology and social media. Mm. And Cecilia, you did our going virtual course two years ago to learn how to build and launch virtual services. Yes. And the first thing that I realized is you are someone that is so um, open to learning new technology, new ways of doing things. So that's that's quite an impressive character trait to have the ability to work through that fear. Is that something mm-hmm. you've always had? Uh, no, I am always curious. I love to learn. And I, I and what I am discovering as I was part of your group, coaching group, and, and now is that I love the process of creation. Like because of the coaching group, I create my whole website. And that for me is like conquer the technology, you know, building and and now working with social media and creating this videos and it's just the process of creation Mm. that I enjoy enormously I think is in my DNA and of course look at the industry you're in you enjoy creating um but you've had the ability to um push through the the confusion and the overwhelm um and it's something that I've always admired in you I know that you you kind of have tackled lots of different platforms so building a website um what were we doing the other day um talking about the converter the tools that will convert all your blog posts into an ebook um yeah and so you've already you've got this curious nature anyway and I know mm-hmm. that you've been on Instagram not not finding as much growth as you'd like what what are your thoughts on Instagram um I do you know this algorithms on Instagram mm-hmm. and um I just realized I have to do this for fun do you know it's like of course I want to grow my business I want to be completely booked by the rest of the year but Social media can become very overwhelming for me. And I realize, in particular to Instagram, right? Yeah. I am a regular person. I don't dress in designer clothes. I'm if I have my designer clothes was picked by hand in second hand, you know, like yeah. I am a real person. I, I don't have discretionary income. And Instagram at one point really kind of uh I I burn out with Instagram. So now what I'm doing is opposite, right? So I I I listened to TikTok, your interview with I forgot her name. Yes. So sorry for everyone listening. Um Cecilia and I were in the we're in the middle of a coaching session two minutes ago yes. and <laughs> and she was sharing her feedback on what she's been doing since listening to my second last episode on TikTok. How to use TikTok particularly for women over 40 in the styling image industry um, and listening to the insights that Candice DeVille shared from Copilot. And because, and what Cecilia was saying was so relevant. I thought, if it's okay with her, could we shut this down, jump over to Zoom, record your feedback live, and then crack on with our actual work? So tell me, you listened to the TikTok episode and then yes. what happened? So, and then I find out that for certain features of, TikTok, I need to have a thousand followers, which I am only 10% almost there. So long way to go. But oh, and you only started about two weeks ago with no, yeah. with no followers. Yeah. So let's and set it, the same. It's, yeah. But it is fascinating for me. Like for me, it was liberating, right? Because my English is not perfect. And I, I know that. And I can live 50 years here and my English will not be perfect. I make my English mistakes, right? And then... I am on TikTok and I can talk and, and I watch so, sorry, the language, but some stupid things like that oh, makes Cecilia, you laugh. For everyone right? that knows me, the fact that you apologize for saying the rude word stupid, I, I just want to take a moment and appreciate that because my language is foul, very foul most of the time. So very sweet of you. Thank Please you. Continue. So <laughs> I see women, I, I, I follow some specialists on menopause because I am going through menopause, right? Mm -hmm. And I make, and one of her advices is that make comments 
and not just make comments for making a comment, make a comment because you really can relate to that. And that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes my comments that I know exactly what you're talking about. So, and there are some stupid things like she's opened the refrigerator and the freezer to cool down. Oh my God, I can relate to that. So you make comments, but then I can make my 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 posts there and my videos there and my lives there. And I don't feel threatening because you see more normal people trying to express themselves or sometimes just venting and that I avoid it. And, but, and people singing and, you know, it's just non-threatening environment for me to make my videos and post. And if I have people watching, great. If I don't, great too. You know, it's, this is so interesting. So just to recap, you, I know you're, um, and I think you, you, you had one of the questions about creating content in your native language or in English. Um, and in English, I create in English because I live in US, right? Yes. And I, I don't do business in Brazil. So my whole clients are here. So, but it, it, I thought it was less threatening for me to create a three minutes video or 15 minutes, 15 seconds, like, video on TikTok and then post on Instagram, then trying to create on Instagram. But so- this is this is really interesting. So for those that haven't listened to the TikTok episode yet, Candice was explaining that TikTok is in fact a really great space for people that feel a little bit awkward or uncomfortable being on camera and a little mm-hmm. bit uncomfortable creating content for Instagram when they feel like the um the pressure to 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 create perfect polished content is too much for them. And what Candice was saying is the raw, vulnerable, rough edit, not perfect content on TikTok performs better. So this is, this is almost a safe space. So for Cecilia, who is for no, honestly, Cecilia, you know, your English is perfect, but I know for you, the the self-conscious feeling of not being able to articulate yourself clearly or not being able to, um, you know, particularly sort of in written word, that that's a a personal barrier that's held you back from creating content with the freedom that you've found on TikTok, which is really interesting. And when we had our last session, I think you had just started, you had zero followers and we had a little look and Candice had told us, TikTok encourages you to have genuine conversations and it facilitates that and it rewards you for that. So since then, you've got 100 followers and you've been able to create content where you don't care if you've mucked up a word and you don't care if you um, accidentally no. stop and start. That that feeling of not caring means that you obviously feel free enough to share 20 years of expertise in a more comfortable way. Is that mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 I, and I went because they become sometimes short, right? Shorty like videos. Mm-hmm. And then I post them on Instagram and that's fine. And I post them on YouTube because YouTube now you can put like short videos. So I have been uploading them to YouTube and I have been using them for Pinterest idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the same clip that I create on TikTok, go to Pinterest, go to YouTube, go to Instagram, instead of going the opposite direction. So that's... But isn't that interesting? So the only reason you're going in the opposite direction is potentially the fact that you feel psychologically more safe, more comfortable creating content within the TikTok forum and and then repurposing. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like they have templates, right, for photos. You can put four, four, four photos, five photos, up to ten. So you put, they have already the music there, and then you create some effects, and boom, the video is done. So I don't have to try to figure out on Instagram how to split the image, I, which I cannot do until today, to have two images playing at the same, two videos playing at the same time. Forget it. I don't have time for that. So it's I play so more with Facebook. It's more fun to play with TikTok. It's crazy, isn't it? No, and no. 61. 
But so, <laughs> so you're 61 and you're finding that the TikTok platform is more comfortable for you and easier to navigate than Instagram. That's really, really interesting. And I think everyone would like to hear this and tell me what's been happening with the conversations that you said that you were engaging with um, women that are well, talking about menopause. One of them in particular, right? Because um, I, I am, and I am learning a lot because there are really serious people using TikTok and that's what I was very surprised. There are doctors, there are um, it, like uh, uh, people who does diets. I forgot the name. Nutritionists. In English. Nutritionists. Yeah. yeah. And some very like specialists in menopause. And, you know, we are all like, I am middle age. I know what menopause is. And I learn a lot um, listening to some clips that they have. That's fascinating me. The fashion one, not as much because I cannot relate much to the young girls. That's yeah. interesting, right? It's more yeah. young girls um, showing yes. how to dress, and and uh, some of them are what they call how you call I forgot the name, Sarah. When you influencers, right? So yes. they have like uh, I'm barely a hundred, and I'm so happy I have a hundred. They have like twenty thousand followers. It's is a I, I guess, said how let's hold on let's just business numbers let's just take a, a brief moment to acknowledge that 75 percent of those followers may in fact be men and I know you receive a lot like a, a lot of male I do kind of, and I don't follow back that mm. is my rule here right and I don't follow back and I make sure that they know that like one of the is like I am 37 years in marriage so I I did a poll I I did one that for TikTok, because I started receiving all this following for men. And I said, ah, my husband is traveling. He's coming back. And I feel like a teenager waiting for him to come back. Mm. And I am 37 years old, married, right? right? And I am so blessed to have that. And my, my TikTok is business and everything, but I made clear that I have that... They know where I stand for. And mm. then I have men following me. <laughs> so do you know why? It's hard to get. <laughs> I don't get it. But I don't, I ignore all of that. Because, you know, it's this, but this happens also on Instagram. So it's not just on uh, TikTok. This happens on Instagram too. So it's something that is there and you have to know you set your boundaries where you want to be so but that's yeah. interesting see what you're saying is um you're finding a lot of professional um serious relatively serious industry experts on yeah. tiktok but the fashion category um because it's mostly young girls to me that says that this is a growth opportunity this is an mm -hmm. opportunity for you to position yourself as an expert in um, fashion for women who in their second, in, uh, women who want to own their hill, which is all of your brand is all about. Yeah. Instead of viewing yeah. yourself as over the hill, let's actually own that hill, which is fabulous. So um, rather than seeing all of these young girls creating fashion content as a um, as a downside, that tells me that you've got a little sweet spot just waiting for you. So there's lots of. So I am waiting, <laughs> and yeah. I don't ask anyone to follow me. I, I now I have like some. I don't understand how the algorithms on TikTok still work. I'm trying to figure out that, but suddenly people are popping up in my thing. Follow me, please. I need a thousand. Yes, we all need a thousand. If I want to go live on TikTok, yeah. I need a thousand. Do you know they they mm -hmm. put certain restrictions there, but I find out like. If you search like my company where I not image atelier because image atelier is just uh, a name that under uh, another company that my husband and I have together. Mm -hmm. And my husband said, see, if anyone goes in the tax and try to search for this company, they will find a company. So if you put that we have a number there, boom, just that is public information here. There is no secret there. You can put that. So I did that. And then I was uh, allowed to, they accept my company name and I proved that I am under this company and I could list my website. So if you go to my profile mm -hmm. now, I have my website list there. And mm -hmm. I know some people visit because 
it's just there. So, so you've yeah. got website, you've got web traffic from TikTok. I think so. Yeah, well because done. I put, I was able to put my, because I see people, they tell you that people visit your profile. Yeah. So they look at you. So, yeah. So, so yeah, it's been fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. See, thank you for sharing your feedback. Oh, and you're I welcome. Think, um, do you know what? This is quite funny. It's, um, a little bit like being on a weight loss journey, I guess. You've you've kind of started on this journey and you're four weeks in. Maybe I'll check in with you in another four weeks and we'll do another quick chat to share with everyone to see how you're going because yeah. your yeah. insights, tracking your day-to-day progress and what you're finding and what you're discovering as an image consultant that's been in the industry, a senior experienced image consultant that's been in the industry for 20 years, um, 20 or 30, did you say? I don't want to 20. 20. Don't 20. make me older than I am. <laughs> no, I just didn't want to give, I just didn't want to cut off your expertise. But I think it's really interesting. And also, and Cecilia, tell everyone what your Instagram handle is because I think um, so you are you genuinely are such an inspiration. Your attitude and your spirit um, and your ability to tackle things that you've not had to tackle before in your business. Um, I, I would imagine that there'd be people that want to ask you questions directly. So yeah, what's your um, Instagram? It's Image Atelier. Image Beautiful. Atelier. And uh, what I can say, Sarah, you know, sometimes you have to go through things like, I think the pandemic actually was horrible for a lot of people. But I think the my most growth that I had in my business happens during the pandemic. And it's funny, isn't it? I revamped my business. I revamped my website. I just stepped and and did things in terms of technology that I never did before. So, yeah, it was a growth period for me. And now I am am a TikToker. (laughs) Yay. 